To most, the proof of a successful life is a luxurious car in a driveway or an extravagant house to come home to. My grandfather, affectionately known as Papa Jack, knew better. He knew that material things of this world are not the legacy to leave behind for your children and grandchildren. Papa Jack was a successful man in the parts of his life that truly matter. Papa Jack was born on July 15, 1939, and like many from this era, he was not a stranger to hard times. At 15, Papa Jack and his older brother Tommy learned the harsh truth of how fleeting life is when they discovered their father's body. This horrible tragedy taught a lesson to him, and that was to always cherish the moments you have with your family. He helped keep his five brothers and four sisters together until the day it was time for him to set out and start a family of his own. On July 7, 1960, Papa Jack married the love of his life, my grandmother Betty. Together they had four beautiful kids, one son, and three daughters. He loved his family unconditionally and gave them everything he had to offer. Papa Jack did not have much money, but his job allowed him to provide his family with food, clothes, and shelter. But he knew that his children would not always need him for those necessities, but they would always need his love. So when the day came that his children grew up and started families of their own, Papa Jack made sure to continue to show his love for his family. Whether it was just a simple family dinner, a barbecue on the first warm day of summer, or a holiday, he made sure our family was together. I always remember having such a good time going to Granny and Papa Jack's house because there was always laughter, great food, and wonderful memories to be made. Papa Jack's favorite holiday was Thanksgiving, and it is the first holiday that I can remember. I was probably around three or four years old and ready to eat all of the wonderful food my grandmother, aunt, and mom had prepared. I had turkey, potatoes, and a roll on my plate when Papa Jack sat down beside of me at the table. I watched him curiously as he tore his rolls apart into bite-sized pieces and then poured gravy over top of them. He looked down at me when I asked what he was doing and said with a smile, this is the best way to eat them. You want to try it? I nodded and he happily helped me find a new favorite way to eat rolls on Thanksgiving. I still do that to this day and each time I think of that moment with him. Papa Jack knew simple yet meaningful memories such as showing me how to tear my rolls apart were memories that would last. He used to call my mom and her siblings every day just to talk to them. My mom still mentions how she misses his phone calls because those calls were made out of love for his children. Such simple little memories that have stayed with her all these years mean more to her than any gift or treat that he could have bought her growing up. Now I'm not saying that Papa Jack did not like to spoil children with treats because he definitely did love to do that with his grandkids. My grandmother used to take care of my older cousins and myself while our parents worked and we loved when we heard him pull into the driveway. We would play with Papa Jack and enjoy a surprise treat he would bring us home. Whether it was cookies, ice cream, or a fresh watermelon on a hot summer day, his treats always hit the spot. After a while, my two older cousins went to school and left me on my own. I guess he knew that after spending my entire life surrounded by my cousins that I was lonely, so once in a while we'd get into his gray geo and go to town. Sometimes we'd go by a little country store that has since been torn down and grab some candy and sodas. But my favorite times were when we would go to the dairy freeze for some ice cream. He would always let me pick out the flavor, vanilla usually, and he would always get the double cone, which looks like two cones fused together. This was a very big treat for a very small four-year-old. He let me have my fill of the ice cream and then ask for a lid. Do not know why, but I never wanted it back after that, and so he would finish it off. I miss those trips of sharing ice cream with, together with him. It was not the ice cream he bought that made those trips special. It was the fact that after working a demanding, thankless job, nothing made his day better than to spend time with his hyper rambunctious four-year-old granddaughter. Papa Jack broke our hearts when he passed away from a massive heart attack on June 19, 1994. It has been nearly 21 years and the sting of his loss is still just as painful as the night we received that horrible call. The memories we were able to collect during our time with him eases our pain, and we have clung to the subtle lesson he taught us about the importance of family. Each year, our family gets together for every holiday, and not a one of us can say that he is not in our minds and hearts. Shortly after his funeral, my grandmother discovered four $1 bills in his wallet. At the time, Papa Jack only had four grandchildren, and each of us received his last dollars. To me, the $1 bill that I proudly have hung in the photo of me squeezing his neck tightly is a reminder that millions of dollars will not give me what the love of my family can. 
Family and love is what creates a successful life and a meaningful legacy.